Hi everyone. I've been asked uh, quite a few times now um, on some of my videos and via message if I will show how I'm going to make the books up for the challenge that I've had going. And um, this is the second, maybe third last one I'm putting together now. And I thought, well, okay, let's kind of record how I'm doing it. So this video will actually contain how I actually make the base of the book, um, some average sort of measurements, but I'm not really much of a measurer, so you know, you use your own judgment on what size book you want. Uh, it also shows the sewing of the books and partial decoration. I show how I'm uh, it'll be like a fast motion, just sort of my process on how I decide what's going to go where on a page. And once I have decided on a page, then I will glue it or sew it into position. But um, if I'm not 100% positive, I'll do like what I've done here and I will make my pages up. and kind of leave them um, for a while and then come back and look at them later to see if I still like it and whether it needs tweaking, whether it needs something else going for it. So um, that's what I'll be showing you how to do and you know to balance things out and you don't have to add a lot to the pages. Um, so yeah, this, that's what this video will be containing, but it will be quite long, so I'm sorry about that. So, But I hope you enjoy it, and I really hope you find it useful. So in front of me, I have my fabric on the ironing board, and giving it a quick press before we start actually uh, making the book. I will put a diagram on the thing now that will give you the actual measurements that I used to make the books. Okay, so this is a quick diagram I've done just to show you uh, the measurements. So if you want to um, pause the video here, you can take them down. Now these are just average. I would always leave a little bit extra length just in case your, um, your folds are a little bit out. Okay, so although it says 142... Uh, 142 centimeters across the top there allow an extra few centimeters or you know 56 inches maybe allow 60 inches or you know just in case you're off a little bit and the whole idea is for this each double line is a gusset which will be like this part here and then each dash line is where you fold it so this is this part here and that will form your page and in between each page you will end up with a gusset which will allow you to put embellishments on your pages. When you're actually ironing a seam of any kind, better open the seam up and press it open and make it nice and flat because when it comes time to folding and things it just helps the seam to appear a lot neater. So we'll quickly iron this fabric nice and flat. This actual piece is about 150 centimeters long. I always allow a little bit extra just in case, you know, when you're ironing you don't have a ruler with you, you're not taking precise measurements. So it's better to have a little bit more fabric than is actually needed. So now I'm going to use the measure just to get, you know, a basic idea of how big I'm wanting my the, the size of page to be. So I'm just measuring up how wide I want that first page, which will be one of the covers, to be. And once I've done that, I'm going to fold it over and iron that crease in, get it nice and straight, and double check. I always allow it a little bit wider, of course, just, you know, any fluctuations, and just give it a little 
press there and then once you've done that all we do you can see that nice firm crease is we move it over about half an inch and then we will or of course I think is the measurement but uh, put over three quarters of or you know one and a half centimeters let's give it a little check just so you can tell by your eye what it is and press that little crease in as well and once you've done that you've done the first gusset for your book and you'll just um, see how that gives you a nice guideline once um, once you've done that then measure for the size age fold it over like that now this is a bit of a tricky part getting the book all sort of ironed up but it's well worth it in the end and give that a bit of a press And then once um, you're happy with that, you move it over. You can tell by the crease where the next crease has to be made. Like that, see? Just compare both sides, make sure nice and the same size. Once you're happy with that, you're going by that first line, of course. You can iron that back one, which is your new start of the new set. There we go. And then once again, we're going to move it along another three quarters of an inch or one or one and a half centimeters, whichever the case may be. Make it nice and even and um, give that second one a little press. And we're going to do that pretty much along the whole of the fabric until we have the back cover, four folded inserts, and the front cover. And that, that's pretty much all there is to setting the book up. You can see how it quite easily just folds up into book form now. As it's finished, you can see exactly where you're going to need to fold the book for it to um, keep its shape and where your sewing lines will be. Okay, so we have our book that we've already ironed up to how we want it. Now this part here, like I said, I can either trim that off, which I might just do now, or I could um, just leave it there for a little bit of extra strength. It's totally up to you. It, you don't really need it, but it's it doesn't hurt anything. But just so that you know, you don't get confused because there's a little. But hanging off the edge there, I will trim it. And I also 
also have another one that I did, and this one also has a little bit here, so I'll just trim that one off as well. Um, that's because my measurements may not be perfect because I do tend to eyeball things rather than have perfect measurements. It's just the way I do it. But I did take the measurements for approximation just to help people out if that's what they wanted. Now, of course, I ran out of the sheeting that I was using for the majority of the books. And so this last book has got this linen type fabric. It's actually linen and a little bit of calico joined together but that's okay because you you won't even notice that when it's finished um now i'll show you how i sew them together i'll do it on this one just so because it's a darker color than the um the cotton and you will see what needs to be done so here's my trusty sewing machine and um all I'm going to be doing is grabbing each page like that, folding it up and sewing along the first line on each one. I will show you. And it's just a straight stitch. And I do like to do it on the sewing machine because these books, you want them to last for a while. And it... You know, by the time they're put together, they can be a little bit weighty, and you want them to last. So, just a little back stitch. I'm going to need a new globe soon. I think it's very dull. Okay. So, as you can see. That's our back page there. Oh gosh. That's our, I went really crooked there. We might have to do that again. Why did I go so crooked there? So I'm not, should that matter? No, that's not gonna, is that gonna matter? That's not gonna matter at all. I don't know what happened there. Okay, so that's what you do because you need this gusset. So the next one you fold up like that, you'll be stitching it there. And there and it will leave a gusset for your next page so I will show you that now and let's hope we get it a little bit straighter this time perhaps I should put my other glasses on if I can find them This should give you an idea of what I mean. There's our back page. There's our next page that sits in there like that. Okay, now see how there's a little gully in the center there, which is where the two iron parts were. And then the next page, and we will do the same again. We will Put that together like that and we want to be sewing on that first seam going down just um yeah and you can usually see the crease is just here and it should match up with the last sewing the last sewing mark on that side and then you just follow that crease down And sometimes, you know, as you're sewing, you may need to just adjust it a little bit if your ironing might have been a little bit off. Okay, and there's our front page. So, 
we have our book put together. A lovely, lovely, whoops, very strong book. You know, nothing, no pages are going to be falling out. It's really strong and I, I really like, I know it's a little bit fiddly to start off with, um, but I think it's worth it. I really do. Okay, and we have a gusset here, and what's that? what that is for is to give space for if you're putting a page here. Of course, if you just want to flap it over like that, you can. It doesn't, you know, it, it's fine. The same with the back page. You've allowed a little bit, and it will just fold over like that. Now, that one's done on the machine. This one, not everybody has a sewing machine, do they? Um... And I know a lot of ladies think, oh no, I don't want to sew. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> there are some times when it's best to sew um, because it just holds together. This one's been sat around for a few days, so I've just got to get my bearings. Might start at the other end. Um, it's stronger. It will hold together a lot better if you sew. Now, if you can sew... I should have re... I'm just going to go re-iron it because I've had this and it's sort of losing its creases. Although it shouldn't be too hard. Let me have a look. Um, what was I going? What was I saying? Um, if you can sew a lace flower together, you can sew this. Because all it is is a running... A running stitch. So grab a couple of pins. I don't know where all my pins have gone. It's terrible. They're probably on. Oh, I know where they are. They're holding other things together. Okay, so just pin your page. I can just see the line there. So hopefully that's enough. I'm trying to scrape up another. It's a bit big. Um, Just pin it. <laughs> that pin is terrible. I think that's the one I clean the tip of the glossy accents out with. And see, we've left the gusset for the back page. And what we want to do is sew down here with a running stitch. Okay, so that's, that's not a hard thing to do. And all you have to do is have needle and thread. I don't know if that's quite long enough. I think I've got another one. That one's better. It's longer. Okay. Needle and thread. Just put a little knot in the end of your cotton to finish it off. And all you're going to do is sew down there. Hope my needles are nice and sharp. It's really humid. Nothing's working the way it's meant to. Do a double stitch to start with, or a triple, which I'm totally up to you. This needle's probably a bit thick for this fabric. And then all you're going to do is just do a small, a small running stitch is all you will need. Like you don't want it too spaced apart and you don't need it you know as tiny as machine stitch of course it's just to give it some strength and hold it together because I really think sewing is stronger than gluing in this instance by all means so you can glue your embellishments on glue your lace on glue your you know whatever onto it but the actual pages to hold the book together really need to be quite sturdy because it would be awful to you know, in a year's time for your pages to start falling out, wouldn't it? Okay, so as you can see, you know, they're not perfect by any means and they're not that tiny. They're just nice little, nice little stitches, probably, you know. And this, this really wouldn't take that long, especially if you had a sharp needle. That would be really, really helpful. I 
finish it off with a couple of stitches at the end. Maybe one over the end as well would be a good idea. If you've done a few stitches, you don't have to knot the end at all. It should be quite alright. So there's a page, and look, if I open that up, you know, that's really strong, and that's just a running stitch. Because they're not spaced too far apart, that is going to be basically as strong as the machine sewn one. Um, and you just go along and do exactly the same thing. This one had too much extra fabric, so that's actually the back page. That will be that one. And then so on and so on. I need to go re-iron this one, though, and sew it. And, um, yeah, that will work just as well as a machine for those ladies that don't have a sewing machine or don't want to use a sewing machine. Um, but I do definitely recommend sewing the book rather than um, rather than gluing the book. Okay, so we'll go back. We'll go back to this one now, shall we? And I just want to give you an idea. Um, so I'm not saying this is how they're going in the book because that's going to be, you know, you'll see that when it's finished. So. That will be the cover of your book. There'll be a page on the cover of the book. Um, then you come to your first page. And of course this will go in as the first page. And then, then you will have others going in like that. But you see, we don't want all this fabric showing around the pages. So the idea now is to decorate the pages. Now I've done my book this way because I have all these pages to put in. So I only have to decorate around the edge. If you didn't have pages as I have here, then you would just decorate these pages as is. You can glue, you can hand sew. Um, to a certain degree you can um, get it under the machine. Um, but you can also make your own little pages to stick in yourself, which I always find is quite easy and a little bit less less daunting. But, um, like, if we take this page here and, say, this, this page here, they have very similar colours in them, which is a nice thing. I'm just trying to find some laces. Okay, uh -huh. okay, this is the one Roseanne sent me that's I left out. So now this, I'm not saying this is exactly how the book is going to be, but I just sort of want to give you an idea. I just grabbed a handful out, and I'm thinking, okay, I need to fill up these spaces now because. That's not how we want it to look. And it, I don't want it so square either. So, you know, I could do this colour here is similar to this colour here. Um, so to make the pages, you know, harmonise together nicely, I could use something like this. Now, we need to leave the gully free. We will put a bit of lace down there at the end. So we don't want to put anything in the gully, okay, in the gusset. So bringing in this colour here will help complement that page there. Um, and the same on the other side, you know, perhaps not that one. Bringing a bit of, a bit more white over here will help that page complement that page a bit. So I could maybe, you know, put this or a different lace, it depends down the side there and that will help it to flow better um, if you know what I mean. Uh, this has some beautiful wedding applique on it and this is a very similar type thing. So you know I could put like a little applique up the top here. I've got the fan blowing 
um, and it would also bring this type of thing over to this page here. This has some green on it. We have a piece of green which matches the card there. You know, that's quite alright to put a little bit of green. It could go under that flower part there perhaps. Uh, what else do we have here? Maybe even... See, I don't want to change the pages whatsoever, but I do want them to complement uh, one another. So, But what I would do is I would look... I've only grabbed this bag randomly here. Uh, oh, here we go, just to show you. Here's a bit of green. Okay, so there's a little bit of green here as well. You know, and that could somehow be incorporated underneath the page not to ruin the page or anything like that just to help the pages to come together as one I would put something coming down here because we don't want that um, we don't want that showing oh here we go this is a beautiful piece I don't know if I'll use this piece here but how pretty is it and look how oh, I'm sorry you can't see um, That's just an example. I do have some wedding trims. I could. Oh, here we go. Here's another. That's no, too big. Um, because you know it just helps things to flow. And how pretty is that looking already? Just with playing around a little bit like that. Uh, the back of it. Just a little bit. Just on the actual page itself, like there's this kind of stuff. If I wanted to put that against the fabric, that would be fine. Or just even like little bits going along the top to finish the pages off and bring them together. Now I can quite easily, what do I use? I've got, I've got a fabric glue here that works wonderfully with fabric. I have a craft glue that I use that works wonderfully with fabric. I wouldn't just use a, a hobby glue or a PVA glue. If you use a hot glue guns then by all means if you're comfortable using that, use that. But just be aware of your, um, your, your gusset down here. You be aware of this part here because once you're done um, you know, you can put some lace over that part there. Okay, and you want to be using a soft glue or some a little bit of hand stitching to put that in perhaps because you don't want it to be crunchy or anything like that. Or even if you don't want to put it like that, you could put like a lace just poking out from behind the page like that on that side and another one poking out on the other side um, you know and it could help to just disguise that little bit of a, a gusset in there but that gives you an idea of how to do or how to make one of these books and it is actually a very easy idea I used this idea with um, the book I have on my channel uh, it's in three parts that book and it was just a little bit different um, a little bit different to this and the difference was that I made my pages before I put them in like say they were my pages and I left an opening down one side and when I made my book, instead of making pages like this, I made, I made the fold was down here, so it was it was very small, like probably uh, what's that an inch or so, um, and then I inserted it into my page, and then I had to sew that in, and it worked wonderfully well as well. 
but it was rather fiddly, I have to admit. You know, it's alright putting the first couple of pages in, but by the time you get to the other end of the book, you know, there's a lot going on there. And it is a little bit tricky. It does work well, but it's not for everybody. And that's why I decided to, instead of finishing the page over here and inserting the page, I decided this time just to have pages and then put the works on top and decorate around it and um, it's working really really well you know it's only the folding and ironing that's the fiddly part that's the only fiddly part of it and it's really once you've you know done a couple and you know what you're doing it's it's not hard now another way I wanted to show you uh, I did this ages and ages and ages ago and this is the just let me put these over here this is the method I used to put this circle journal album together. As you can see, you can see the stitching down there um, because I actually put the cover on at the same time. This was the very first um, fabric book I made. Oh, is this what? Yeah, this is the one. This is what I did. I'm pretty sure this is the, how I did this one. Let me just check. I don't want to be telling fibs, very similar, almost similar, okay, so as you can see, there's a gap, see how there's a gap there, between those two pages, but on the previous page, there's no gap, okay, that's, that's that, then there's a gap, then there's no gap, and there was, there's a gap under that one, then there's no gap again, and I don't know, you see, can't always see it because people have decorated it. Um, and it's basically the same principle as this, which is really easy, and it was all I could sort of think of at the time. And all I did was, I've got my outer cover. This was what I was playing with when I made that. Um, I've got my outer cover, and then I've got the internal pages. And I've just decided how many pages I wanted. So that's one, two, in this case there's three doubled pages. Found the centre of my book and put my first page in, like that. What I did with that one was I just sewed it down the middle. Then I folded it over like that got my next piece of fabric, folded it in half, left a gap and sewed that one down the middle. And the same for the other side. So they were all evenly spaced and they all had a little gusset in them. The only difference is with this one, I made a gusset on the other side as well. So each of the pages inside has its own little gusset as well, like that. Um, like I said, this was only a sample I was mucking around with to work out. If you look here, you will see exactly what I mean. Can you see how they've all got a gusset? Which, in effect, gives each page room to have embellishments on without it ending up looking like a, a triangle when it's finished, you know, like too many embellishments so it all pops up and I'm really not keen on that kind of effect. I like I like the books to be like this, just like a book, all the same across, you know, they're not popping up and that's why you have to leave the little gussets in the middle because you've got um, okay. if you've got these are a bit big for this little book but I just want to show you, if you've got a page there and a page there and then you're closing it like that it's going to take up that room inside and if you have an allowed room in the gusset for that to happen each page will get higher and higher and it'll end up with a, an effect like that whereas I prefer it to have an effect like that you know looking down at the top of the book. Gosh, I hope I'm explaining this well enough for you. Um, and that's why I like to do the gussets. And this one, 
um, once again, you don't have to machine sew that. That's really, oh, that, yeah, I was mucking around trying to work it out. You don't have to machine sew. Once again, you can just hand sew that with a running stitch. That's not hard. And to do a gusset, rather than measure it directly in the middle, measure it in the middle and then allow um, a quarter of an inch either side and sew down. Okay, and these are just old napkins I've used here for this and I don't know if this will ever turn into a book to be honest because it's um, it was just a, a trial to see if it would work and of course once you've got pages in there you've got your binding on the back which is really strong and holds itself and then the insides and there's I left room around, you know, because if you want to put like laces and things like that, you want to have room, but I still like them drooping out the side anyway. I think that's nice. So there's two different ways of doing a fabric lace book that are not too hard. And you may notice my pages aren't stuffed with anything. Well, this one obviously isn't stuffed with anything because this was just a trial. But this one, you know... My pages aren't stuffed with anything because when you get when you get a page on one side like this and all decorated and then you get a page on the other side like that all decorated that page is going to hold itself it doesn't need any extra bulk on it um, I think it's a personal choice too if you wanted to, you could of course put some felt inside that. That would be easy enough. You could do it before you sewed it in or you could do it afterwards. Just cut it to size, slide it in and then just, whoops, <laughs> um, then just glue either end. Okay, um, or so, totally up to you. I'm just going to be gluing all these together once I've put the, I'll just, you know, glue all those. I might run them through the machine, but I'll probably glue them. I'm not sure yet. We thought that far. So I'm still putting embellishments on all the books at the moment. So that's the fun part. So there you go. That's how to make the basics of these books. And then of course, once you've done that, you find yourself a pretty doily or something. Um, you wrap around. I mean, like I said before, these are going to have a page on the front. I will decorate the front around it. And I'll probably have a doily coming from one side all the way around and tucking under the front there. And I will um, go around the edges with some lights and because I like the back will be nice and plain so that it can sit somewhere and it's not going to get damaged and the front will be decorative um, no closure really necessary on these books I haven't found it necessary I've got the two bigger ones I must admit I do like this size the bigger ones uh, like this size here it's beautiful um, it really is beautiful. I would never make one bigger than that though because it is a lot of room to be filling up and I don't know, that could be the same as my other one. <laughs> this is the other one I made. Oh, I love looking through this. I don't look through it quite enough. As you can see, they've all got a bit squashed, but it's always there. Um, yeah, this is the one I inserted them on, but as you can see, when it turns up, it's the same thickness all the way across. You know, it's not bouncing up at the front or anything like that. And it's just so pretty. I love it. I really love it. Um, uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't make one bigger than this at all. I think this is quite big enough, but these lovely little ones, wonderful size because a, a big page like this although these aren't too big inside can be quite daunting you know to to fill up it can be um really hard to fill a big 
a big space up. Actually, looking back at it now, I think, oh, you know, I could add a little bit of something. So maybe it's an ongoing thing. Oh, so pretty. I love that. So pretty. Oh, I've still got to put my thing in, don't I? But yeah. So, you know, in your covers, you can just lay a doily, lace, anything on to make them all pretty. But they're, um, yeah, definitely keep it to a manageable size. And they always end up a little bit bigger. Like, you know, these are the sizes of the pages. You make your books a little bit bigger than the size of the page. You can always trim them down a bit if you want, but if you want the pages to flow, you know, you're going to want some dangly bits and lace and things like that going on as well. So I hope this was helpful to those that have been asking how I'm going to be putting the books together. I hope you could understand what I was saying. And... Um, Ask any questions you want to ask. Ask, um, you know, in the comments below if you don't understand something, just ask a question and I will answer it for you um, because I, I may have missed some things out. So feel free to ask any questions. Mm -hmm.